So welcome everyone and thanks for joining. It's my pleasure to welcome and introduce our speaker today, uh, Jonathan Hassan, who is in charge of the MBSC related activities at uh, Art al Majelium. And he will present us how Kinesis uh, is using Capella to design nano satellites. Oh, hi, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. And so let me uh, tell you a wonderful story about uh, nano satellites and Capella and so on. So, uh, first of all, the actors. Three main actors in this story. Uh, first of all, the CNES, French National uh, Space Agency, uh, which Develop, design, manage a lot of complex space systems, you know, study space and events and so on. They they had a, a first real satisfying Capella experience some months ago in collaboration with us with Atal, and currently they are spreading MBSC in all their processes. And nice news. Kinesis is the second actor. It's a company that is really strongly linked to the CNES. It currently designs a new uh, complex space system. I will present it to you uh, just after. And uh, then in those both contexts, in those both companies, we worked as a tal, as a couple expert, uh, providing training sessions, coaching sessions, and also a uh, couple customization stuff, uh, such, such as a uh, couple extensions, a uh, couple uh, viewpoints, and so on. So first of all, first of all, no, not first, second step. As a, uh, a pinch of history about uh, the CNES activity, it was an activity that was made um, in collaboration with CNES and Natal in order to discover Capella and to see what Capella can add in their process, can how it can improve their process. So it was made in the context of the SVOM project, a space system dedicated to gamma ray detection. Uh, it's a satellite that embeds sensors and ground signals and so on. It's a system that is under development. It will be launched next year, uh, if everything is okay. And then uh, the four last years, we made an MBSCM experimentation with them uh, in order to prove the relevant use of MBSC in their context to try to replace their, their historic process by uh, a new one. Um, the first step was to capture the system, the, the system architecture using Capella and then to try to use it as um, uh, in order to drive the VNV activities. So this first experimentation, we obtained promising results with uh, really nice use of Capella with good uh, good results, good communications mean and uh, good uh, process coverage using uh, Capella and some extensions. So. Uh, I, uh, the, those results were presented during the 2020 uh, Capella days, so you can have the links. And then uh, the idea, talking with the CNES, was to try to propagate those same the, the same principle in another context to see if everything is really uh, possible in all contexts and so on. And so uh, the idea was to try to use the principles we applied on, on this context on a, in an operational way, uh, using Capella as a real single source of truth. It was not really the case during the CNES collaboration, but in this case, trying to, yeah, to, to make it really central and maybe on a similar case, but maybe more complex to see. So, that was the beginning of the Kinesis Artal collaboration. So, Kinesis, who is Kinesis? What is Kinesis? Kinesis is a company created uh, quite uh, five years ago. It's yeah, the meeting of the new space, um, the new space momentum with the IoT technology, okay, Internet of Things, dedicated of embedding sensors and software on physical objects, various physical objects. And the other is the, the idea is to try to connect them through space uh, items, satellites, and so on. Uh, currently, Kinesis is around uh, 50 employees. It's a really growing company uh, due to the complexity of the of the system they, they develop. Uh, yeah, it's, it was uh, initiated by the CNES, by CLS, and other companies that you, that are displayed there. And the main goal of Kinesis is to try to democratize uh, the, Argo, the Argos technology and uh, to extend it, to manage and to, to consider the IoT market, market. Yeah, the whole IoT market. So 
Argo system, it's quite a well-known kind of uh, communication system. Okay, it's initiated uh, several uh, decades ago. Uh, the idea is to study, to monitor, and to try to protect our planet's environment by uh, yeah, by having some measure and uh, information. And so there is two main uh, kind of structures: the uh, space segment that is composed of GPS satellites and Argo satellites and also a ground segment that is composed of a uh, transmitter. Uh, the well-known uh, kind of transmitter are those that are uh, plugged on marine animals to try to, to, to know, to, to see where they go, how they live and so on. So currently it's uh, the Argo system is composed of uh, seven uh, Argo satellites, a lot of uh, transmitters and it works over 100 countries and uh, currently, there is three main uh, versions of Argos uh, that, that works all together uh, with uh, satellites and so on. Um, and currently, uh, you have to know that uh, the revisit time is around two hours, and uh, we, you have data for a given uh, transmitter only each two hours. Uh, so when uh, marine animals uh, navigate, it can be a, a lot of, of uh, variation in two hours, but yeah, it's currently so, so the characteristic of this system. So the idea um, that is hosted and proposed by, by uh, Kinesis is to extend this system to handle IoT principle. Um, so manage maybe a smaller uh, transmitters, smaller systems, and uh, also to add a lot of uh, satellites, in this case, nano satellites, uh, all around the globe, and uh, also 20 ground stations in order to have a revisit time that is really less than two hours, in this case, five, maybe 15 minutes, okay? And uh, in general, to upgrade the IT infrastructure in order to, yeah, to have better, better system and, and more modern, okay? Um, so the main challenges are just to design the system, to validate it and to launch it. Uh, so maybe uh, the next year. Uh, and uh, the idea in our collaboration was to uh, try to use Capella as a quite single source of truth, but mainly in the case of the system test, okay, uh, focus on the system test. Uh, the idea being to not change uh, the way how we test systems, but uh, to just support the, the same uh, regular way as a uh, test system at, at NES or, or, or whatever. Uh, but in this case, using Capella model in order to drive um, those, uh, those steps. So first, uh, first point is maybe to, to be sure about what are the benefits that can be uh, injected by, by using MBAC and Capella approaches. Um, first of all, our point of view is that there is three main um, uh, improvement uh, gain. First of all, the communication, okay, um, by using a rigorous language uh, and to reduce ambiguities to a, a determinist understanding of the model specification. Uh, the second point is to secure uh, the specification by uh, uh, by ensuring uh, traceability, uh, consistency, uh, completeness, and, and so on. The last point is to, to be able to generate automatically assets, uh, such as uh, specification documents and so on, avoiding uh, error uh, in the conversion of data uh, by using automatic generation. So when uh, when we tried to 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 inject uh, some capella stuff inside the the, the kinase process kinase process which is quite close basically and initially uh, close to the kinase process because they, they are both really linked uh, the first idea was to to learn uh, to learn capella for for kinase employees uh, so the beginning was just a three days training session just to have an overview to give them an overview of all uh capabilities of capella what are the different layers okay two layers dedicated to the need understanding two next layer uh, dedicated to the capture of the uh, re the, the answer to this need the solution 
that has fitted to it by uh, yeah, describing the logical architecture and the physical architecture. Um, So uh, once uh, the, um, the the training uh, was was done, the, the idea was directly to start the model initialization. Okay, to 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 start the, the modeling of the system itself. Um, so they they needed for the beginning uh, several coaching session in order to drive uh, the modeling activities. Uh, mainly for the first uh, for this first modeling, we we start directly on the logical architecture layer because the um, the architecture was already defined and mainly specified. In this case, the idea is to to capture it to drive the uh, validation and the v VNV uh, activities. So we we didn't need to to have uh, the the first steps such as uh, operational analysis or system analysis. Uh, that's the case. That's why we we had already some existing documents, uh, low semantic documents that we used as inputs, and then we captured the first uh, LAB, okay, logical architecture blank. That's a good entry point in, the, in this context. And then they created by themselves one, two, three, and they became crazy and they create ten, eleven, and so on. A lot of uh, LAB to capture all specific um, behavior of the system and uh, and uh, yeah all uh, all dedicated uh, activity. Um, then uh, we met a, a first uh, kind of obstacle uh, that um, during the uh, during the process the global process of defining and uh, designing the system, two models were built in parallel. Uh, the main model that was created by Kines uh, with our assistance, okay, that is quite an integration model with all uh, parts of the system and all uh, sub subsystems and and uh, connections uh, between, between subsystems, okay. And another model, that was done by by Thales in order to describe just one subcomponent of the system. So if we those two uh, schema represent the two kinds of the model with the green part that are that represent the, the same systems, but in details in the case of uh, Thales and in space. Um, and so the idea was to try to, to try to find a way to reconcile them in order to 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 synchronize them. Okay. Two, man two manners were um, needed. It's first of all to try to uh, get in the main model, in the top model, to get the public interfaces that are defined by Thales in the sub model. And the second one was to potentially get also some sub parts of the, of the sub components in order to have quite an overview of it. We will not inject all sub information, but we we'll would have uh, we need to to have uh, some partial information about it. So the challenge was how to be able to connect them to recreate traceability link between those two models, um, and potentially to be able to execute kind of um, automatic synchronization. Several solutions were imagined and. Yeah, we thought about several solutions. First of all, to try to reconnect uh, the two models by considering the sub model as a record and to use it as a replica inside the integration model. The second solution was to try to recreate link uh, between the components in order to be able to reconnect to the system to subsystem mechanism, okay, using the dedicated uh, capital extension. The third one was to simply de develop a specific homemade synchronization algorithm, algorithm maybe based on those two previous uh, kind of traceability link. And the last idea was to just uh, create an M2Doc template to easily compare quite manually, manually the two models to have a, a template that is really uh, 
highlight uh, uh, the main item to synchronize. And uh, yeah, after uh, thinking about uh, the cost and the, okay, and the need, uh, we decided to use the last, this last solution uh, just to create a dedicated template that allow us to quite make a comparison quite easily, just a visual comparison and comparing the lists of functions, the list of subcomponents uh, of the, 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 the same components, okay, in both two, two models, uh, to compare their content to see if there is missing some items in one side or in the other. So, when, uh, once it was, uh, when it was done, okay, it was okay, we have a main diagram, which is quite growing. Uh, the next uh, logical step was to capture functional chains uh, for two main uh, goals. Uh, the first one was to uh, just highlight composite behaviors. Uh, it's considered uh, in this context as a major communication mean. Okay. Um, it really facilitates the communication between the teams and yeah, the functional chains in this case was really useful. Um, and uh, the other goal was just to, to, to define functional chain as uh, validation objectives. Uh, it's the entry point of the proposed uh, solutions uh, to the CNES, okay, during the CNES at our collaboration, uh, where we defined a, a way to capture VNV items based on the functional chain. The entry point is to define one functional chain for each uh, validation objective. Uh, so, yeah, we start to create several functional chains in uh, uh, LAB diagrams, uh, based on those diagrams. The problem is that um, it's quite, based on this kind of view, uh, it's quite hard to read and to understand for non-initiated people. In the case of Kinis, there are several people that were not just uh, trained to Capella. So, uh, yeah, the idea was to create dedicated lab uh, for each uh, functional chain. The problem is that it's quite laborious to create several uh, replica of uh, uh, LAB, just create each time a new LAB. And if you have modification in the original functional chain, you have to synchronize it and so on and so on. So, the idea was uh, to implement a new tool dedicated to the, the generation of those specific view, okay, a dedicated lab, dedicated to the representation of a given functional chain. So several steps. First one, you create a new lab, okay, you import, you display in this lab the components you want to display, okay. So in this case, we select uh, four components. So yeah, by default, uh, LAB, if you have a lot of connections, you will have such kind of diagrams, okay? Quite hard to, to read and to, uh, yeah, to lay out. Then uh, the second step is to import with a new tool that is injected by uh, just a drop-in, just a Capella extension. You, are, you will be able to import a functional chain, uh, the, the functional chain content, uh, like a shortcut, okay, a shortcut to initialize to initialize the, the, the diagram. So in this case, you can select, for example, two functional chains, and potentially you have warning just to warn you that uh, there is missing some components, so you will not be able to display those functions because there is no enough components. And then uh, automatically it will populate the LAB by importing the function, by displaying the concerned functions, and also removing, hiding uh, the unused component port in the context of this functional chain. And then you obtain this diagram, not exactly this diagram, but a uh tool will, will give you uh, such kind of, of uh, representation. So then we have functional chains quite easily to create, and we uh, we we have to, to execute the system test process now, okay, uh, as defined during the CNES Artal collaboration. So the main steps are the capture system architecture, that's good, the capture of validation needs, uh, the identification of the functional chain to validate. So in this case, we 
we defined a lot of functional chain, no problem about it. And then the next step is to specify the corresponding tests, the test that corresponds to the functional chains that are to that have to be validated. So in the version we developed with uh, with Zucnes, we have a, a tool, a small tool that allow you to automatically uh, from a functional chain to automatically generate the scenario that is associated to. You can see that in the case and the context of Kinease, the result is not really good because the, the model is a little bit more complex with several functions for single components. Okay, um, with yeah, really more uh, uh, more functions for a given component. So uh, yeah, the scenario are totally useless in this case. In this case, so the idea is to to inject in Capella new ways to uh, to describe scenarios. Um, so we injected kind of automatic creation of sublines. So as you can see, for each. Uh, pink red li pink uh, lifelines okay uh, you you will be able to have sublines that are connected to and then you will be able to um, share to 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 split the functions that are on the same uh, lifeline on equivalent sublines so it allows a uh, superposition of functions in this case uh, you have four lines for the same components and then you can uh, easily display uh, complex uh, exchange for this component. Another example. Oh. Another point that we met uh, using this uh, feature is that we obtained uh, in some time in sometimes a really long uh, scenarios that are totally quite difficult to read and difficult to print or to share with other users. So we decided to inject. Uh, a kind of sub-functional chain support. So first of all, we injected a new feature that allow you for a given functional chain uh, to extract quite easily a subpart and to generate a new sub-function. So there you have a new sub-function that is automatically generated just by selecting functions that are concerned and using a, a, a menu. And based on, for example, this diagram, Basically, mainly we generate a certain kind of diagrams with, in this case, uh, 17 uh, functions. And by considering uh, sub-functional chains as just one, uh, one unitary block, uh, you will obtain such kind of scenario. So 17 items versus just eight items. So really more compact view of the functional chain. So really more use, you, you, uh, useful and easy to share and to, yeah, to analyze. And uh, next step was, yeah, it's good. We, we, we have more uh, comp uh, compact scenarios, but it would be nice to have a more compressed feature, okay, in order to compress uh, more and more uh, the, the scenario. And then we injected a new way to, to kind of override and, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, merge some lines, okay, by by having on a given line several, uh, okay, on one execution several uh, functions. So that's basically available in Capella, but in this case we injected it inside the uh, algorithm. So this step is okay, including advanced advanced features in this case. The next step is to capture the interaction and the uh, success criteria uh, associated to the test scenario. So no problem about it. It was uh, developed during the previous collaboration. And then you will be able to inject the blue, blocks, blue boxes that are um, interaction, user interactions uh, to describe which, uh, which actions must be made by the tester in order to, uh, to execute this scenario and uh, the white uh, yellow uh, boxes to describe what are the success criteria that has to be checked just to see if the, the test is, is okay or not. One more bonus step which was implemented is that uh, we, we identified that sometimes when you have quite complex scenario, 
there is sometimes quite strange events, uh, graphical events when you move something, okay, with uh, diagrams that, that grows and that move. So the idea was in this context to uh, remove uh, the graphical constraints, the capella graphical constraints in diagram. So for example, in this diagram, if you move uh, this item, it will not, con it, you will lose a kind of consistency in your scenario. You see, you will have kind of uh, an empty row, okay, and a row that goes nowhere. And the user has to uh, just fix the model to, to be sure that the, the, the semantics, that the, the mean is, is quite the same. Uh, but yeah, it allows you to make modification where it's, it's impossible in the other case. So that was uh, the activity we had with, uh, with Kinis. It's uh, around one year uh, collaboration with Kinis and Artal. Uh, it's rem it remains around one year before launching the, the nano state, maybe, maybe more, than, more than one year. Um, and then Kinis have gained a new skill about uh, MBSE and Capella. And the system tests are the capture of the system tests are in progress. Okay, uh, they are quite a nice model currently with uh, so the number of uh, high number of components, functions, uh, functional chains, and it's growing uh, progressively. Uh, and they use a dedicated Capella extension to capture the, the VNV, the, the VID, okay, the VNV uh, data. Uh, about uh, the feedbacks of Kinis, uh, they, they found that uh, Capella really, really facilitates uh, the exchange between the teams. Okay, regarding the functional chains, uh, it's, a, it's a communication means that was really used in, in their case, with a huge gain uh, in the context of underdevelopment subsystems, uh, really driven, and the validation of subsystem being driven by high level uh test uh, test sequences okay or the, the main test sequences will drive the validation of subsystems uh that is yeah really useful in their case um in the case of subsystems that are already developed it's a little bit useful because uh, they already define the validation uh, process and so on so less useful but yeah uh and uh, the scenario about the scenario it, in this context, it was really necessary. We spoke a lot about uh, the future uh, I present to you. Um, is it really necessary to generate scenarios? Do we want really to use them? So in this case, yeah, it was um, really, uh, really useful. Uh, and they are quite satisfied by the, by the proposed uh, uh, VNV process, okay, uh, based on Capella. One, uh, one other remark is about uh, picking up a Capella. They said that it's not so easy. They, they needed uh, really assistance in order to, um, to grow up and to, to really understand the different um, features and capabilities of Capella. Uh, the model reconciliation was quite laborious, okay, and is to be done uh, currently. Uh, each time there is a modification in the sub model, they have to synchronize the GAN. So it's quite laborious, but uh, yeah, a solution maybe to avoid the problems they had would be to uh, respect the, an initial defined scheduling about, uh, yeah, maybe uh, creating the main view, the main overview, uh, and then using system to system, subsystem uh, capital extension in order to initialize, to initialize the subcomponents view and then being able to uh, maybe develop or use uh, synchronization algorithms. So about Artal, um, yeah, quite nice experience with the support of uh, Kinis activities. Uh, so we made some Capella trainings and coaching session with them, and we developed uh, collaboration with them, some Capella extension in order to prevent uh, limitations. Uh, the next step of this collaboration, it's not the end of the collaboration. We will uh, maintain it uh, until the end of the project, okay? The launch of the, of the slides. Uh, the next steps will be to capture the missing test scenarios. There is also uh, 
still a lot of, of scenario to capture. So, so we'll, we'll try to coach them and to assist them. And also, uh, the next step will be to uh, implement a new bridge between Capella and Jira RTM. In, uh, that's an extension they use in order to manage uh, the test process. Okay. And the idea will be to uh, be able to automatically publish the Capella model into Jira in order to, yeah, to, to make a uh, strong traceability between the two tools. So thank you very much. Uh, if like this, you need some assistance in inserting a pinch of MBAC in your process, feel free to contact us. You will find some information uh, in this uh, website. And uh, so if you have any questions, I, I remain available for you. My pleasure. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for this presentation, for sharing uh, your experience. Uh, actually, we don't have a question yet, but I'm sure uh, people will uh, will ask us the question soon, very soon. In the meantime, uh, I have a few questions myself. Maybe the first one is, uh, what is the current uh, licenses uh, related to those uh, extension and, and the development you've done? And uh, what are your plans regarding those uh, those extension? Yeah, for sure. Uh, nice question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Currently, it's um, it's a proprietary proprietary uh, development. Okay, it's uh, driven by this collaboration. And uh, so currently, we are building based on those feature a kind of Capella extension, a, a full, a complete Capella extensions. And so the idea is either to sell uh, this uh, extension as is, okay, just providing you uh, using basic uh, selling constru contracts. But another way is maybe to, to define a collaboration because the solution has to be maybe adapt uh, depending on the context, okay? And, and uh, yeah, just feel free to contact us if you are interested in. There is no strong rules in order to provide uh, you this, these extensions and just we adapt uh, regarding the, the, the need you have. Uh, do you need the whole extension, only partial features? Currently, we don't have on this extension uh, open source uh, uh, plans, but maybe it will, uh, yeah, it can also be a, a possibility. Yeah, currently we are working on it, trying to build something that is uh, complete. And, and full and that, yeah, that's quite uh, in progress, but yeah, uh, feel free to contact us if you are interested and we will see. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. And second question from my side, and after that I will go for uh, sure. all attendees questions. Um, so you, you mentioned you, you're able to generate um, a second diagram from uh, your functional chain. Um, I just wonder if there are some cases where uh, a unique functional chain can lead to multiple seconds diagrams, and yeah. how, how do you handle that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, the idea in the uh, scenario generation is not to generate the uh, the solution, the test sequence, but to generate a default test sequence that you will be able to up, to to update and to modify. You can import. Uh, new functions, uh, unitary functions, as you modify any scenario uh, in Capella, and then you will be able to generate several scenarios for a given functional chains to have several, yeah, several answers and several test cases that will satisfy the same uh, validation needs, the same functional chain. Uh, and yeah, for sure, the idea is to, in main cases, to generate several uh, scenarios for the same. Uh, functional chain, just an initialization, it's a default generation that is quite useful when you have a huge functional chain, and then you, then you can just edit them and manage your different version of uh, the scenario with, yeah, different solution, yeah, for sure. Okay, and since you're able to edit the scenarios, is there a, a feedback on the functional chain if you modify the scenario? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> No, no, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, no, not yet. It's not. It was not identified in this case. Um, yeah, that can be a problem. Typically, if you modify the functional chain, currently we don't have any synchronization. 
if you add, for example, a new for a new exchange, a new functional chain in your functional chain, there will there will be no synchronization to the scenario, and um, the the reverse one uh, neither. You will not be able to re-inject scenario modification inside your functional chain. That's a good that's a good idea, yeah, for sure. Just yeah, we have to see if it's uh, useful in this context. But uh, I think that the synchronization way from the functional chain to the scenario may, may be useful in this context. We'll have to see. Yeah. OK, thanks. Uh, next question. Uh, was there any pre-existing requirements or were requirements generated or uh, not used? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you are talking about requirements uh, such as uh, test requirements or just about uh, global uh, high-level requirements. Uh, about the uh, the business requirements, uh, the high-level requirements, they were defined before uh, they were managed and designed and, and captured before this collaboration using other uh, infrastructure. So. In this context, it's uh, out of the scope. Uh, about the uh, validation requirements, the VNB objectives, uh, here nothing is generated. They are only um, defined by the user, by, by the, the guy who model who creates a model, just, just by identifying the coverage of their logical architecture in this case, just by trying to cover the diagram, okay, by defining uh, scenarios and a uh, functional chain that cover uh, the diagram, and that are the requirements, the validation requirements defined by the user. I hope it answers the, the question it says, which has which is behind it. Okay, I guess the question is dual. Uh, so maybe the first part is it with which is. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, is yeah. there any pre-existing requirement? This is maybe the first part. And then, uh, have yeah. you used only a model or a model plus? Ah, model yeah, database? sure. Yeah, yeah. In this case, uh, yeah, the requirements in this context were only based on on the model itself. Um, yeah, the model was the, the the entry point, and then we defined objectives based on this specification. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. What are the two or three biggest criteria used to choose uh, uh, document comparison over other solutions uh, to reconcile system and subsystem component elements? Yeah, um, uh, the, yeah the main criteria was, um, I think, the, the, the ratio between uh, the costs, the, the cost and the time to develop and to uh, capture the, the traceability uh, compared with um, the, the need itself. Um, the, the subsystem model was not uh, growing so much. Okay, there was modification, so there were several uh, synchronizations that were needed and that, that, that were done manually in this case. But developing something and capturing manually the traceability between the two models, given that, yeah, you're right, the REC RPL would maybe be the, the best solution in this case, but we would we'll have to modify the Thales model, so to imply Thales in our collaboration, and, and uh, they have a lot of things to do, so maybe it's, they, they will not have time for it uh, to modify their model. And I think that it will not be maybe a perfect solution regarding synchronization. I don't have the answer yet, yet, but yeah, I think the ratio will, yeah, we decided that the ratio was not so good. And, um, and then we prefer to, to, yeah, to, to, to implement the most basic one to have a quick uh, solution right now and to have a way to, to, to reconcile them. But yeah, it's not perfect because you, we have to do it manually each time. But given that, it's not a lot of time. Uh, yeah, a lot of time. And um, yeah, it's really punctual. And, and using the two M2 doc files was really quite, yeah, quite easy and quite fast. So we decided to, yeah, 
to, to select the economic solution. I think uh, we can say that, yeah, the, the faster solution. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, next question. Um, because Capella doesn't support simulation, uh, so correctness of the model have to be performed by uh, uh, engineers' expertise through peer review. Uh, could you have any other better ways to verify the, verify the model? Hmm. Yeah, currently, uh, currently I have uh, other way to to validate the the model instead of the system instead of doing it manually. But in order to validate the model itself, uh, that's true. In this context, it's the source of truth, so um, it's considered as uh, the entry point. And the, yeah, we we don't. I currently don't have any. Other better solutions than maybe implementing uh, some uh, OCL validation rules to just check the yeah the consistency and the completeness of the model. But uh, in order to to really validate the correctness of it, no, currently uh, yeah I don't have quite better solutions than connecting it to a simulation uh, tool uh, that that exists possible to make bridges with uh, with simulation tool. Uh, the fact is that uh, given that the, the test will be executed on a, on the uh, one time it will be as executed on the real system. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we are really missing luck to, to have uh, the same default in both. Yeah, we will have maybe uh, default, the same default in both, but yeah, I, I think that yeah, that I, so that's a, 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 a good problem. It's that's true. That's yeah. true. difficult to validate okay. of the data of the model itself. But the idea is to execute several validation phases to be sure that everything is okay. But that's uh, yeah. So, I yes, thank that and send. Uh, if I may, well, uh, uh, having a simulation feature doesn't prevent you to uh, have peer reviews because. Well, you can simulate and have uh, poor simulation due to uh, an incorrect model at the first place. So, well, I think this is maybe a part of the answer. Uh, okay, this was the last question we have just for now. Uh, we still have time for a few questions, if any. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I'm just wondering if you already have in mind some uh, other improvements uh, you mentioned the connection to uh, to another tool, but uh, I have in mind some other, let's say, more functional improvement, or maybe uh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, currently uh, we think that we're in a, in the context of of kinase. The, yeah, the structure seems to be quite satisfying and and enough complete. Um, yeah. To be clear with you, yeah, we don't have any yeah, ideas in this context to to improve this uh, infrastructure yet. But uh, yeah, we'll think about it. Um, and working with Skinnies will maybe uh, um, yeah give you more ideas, and we will see. But currently, no yeah, no huge um, huge improvements that are planned. Okay, thanks. Uh... How did you manage your technical non-functional requirements? How do I manage my, my non-textual? Um, my non-functional textual requirements. Non-functional textual requirements. Uh, in this context, uh, yeah, it was not kind of um, the scope because given that the system architecture was really defined before before the collaboration. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but currently I don't have the answer to it. Um, so probably you won't have to manage any non-functional requirement at all. Yeah, in the, yeah, in this case, that's that's a, that's true. <laughs> but in other cases, okay. <laughs> thanks. Um, sorry. For the automated generation of functional chain. 
uh, which algorithm do you use to organize uh, the element in the in diagram? Oh, yeah, that's a that's a big uh, yeah a big uh, problem using uh, modelers and uh, in this case we only use the the, Arangel, the basic Arangel feature of Capella. Uh, the basic one, okay, which is uh, available on the top left of the of the Capella windows. Uh, that's another point where we are working currently. Uh, we are working on it. It's trying to inject a kind of um, uh, layouting assistance in Capella by injecting new specific tools inside Capella. But it's another work uh, that we are working on uh, at, at Artal. Uh, to inject yeah, new, new, uh, new layouting uh, feature. But in this context, the Arangel is working quite, yeah, satisfying, satisfying and enough for the, because when we generate um, models, it's quite simple models, okay, simple LAB uh, or simple scenarios or simple. So it works, it's enough for us in this context. But there is a lot of context that it's not enough. We, we see that for a complex model, it's not satisfying. And then, uh, well, yeah, we are working uh, on such kind of feature in another context to try to yeah, inject new layouting uh, algorithm, layouting features based on ELK, ELK and based on specific algorithm, uh, homemade algorithm. And yeah, we'll. Uh, try to inject them inside Capella. We're working on it currently. Okay. And by the way, if you need some support on this topic, well, probably OBO can help. Um, yeah, sure. And that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you manage your model requirement validation? Uh, or did you capture this information? Uh, in, yeah, once again, in, in this uh, context, we didn't add to capture any requirements, given that... Uh, no, I think the question is more, okay, uh, you add to validate your model and you have to, to say, okay, this part is, uh, is validated at some point. And so, how do, how do you dissociate from uh, the part validated from the other one? Ah, regarding the, the system test uh, challenge, uh, we mainly the idea in order to, to be sure that the whole system is covered by the system tests, speci the specified system tests and the test points and so on. We use a kind of uh, highlight with different colors. It's automatic, automatically embedded in, in, in our extension. And then you can see if a given view of the model of the is totally covered. Um, but in order to, to validate that the model well satisfied the initial requirements uh, regarding the system itself, uh, at this point, we didn't work on it. Uh, we considered that what was captured uh, fully satisfied the original inputs we have that are, uh, yeah, textual uh, document that specifies the system itself. So the validation between the requirements and the system was already done uh, during the, the, the previous step. Okay. And uh, then in our, in our world, we just decided to transfer the system architecture inside Capella and to take it at, at the entry point. And then we didn't make any validation of the system architecture regarding the requirements. That was not the goal of this collaboration. The collaboration really is really dedicated to the system test goal and not to validate that the system architecture is right. Okay. So that's why it's... Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. And just to be sure, uh, I ask the, the, the right question. Uh, if ever, okay, we're not talking about the validation of the model, uh, uh, but uh, we're talking about verification. Um, how do you manage uh, the verification data or the link to verification requirements? Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure to well uh, get the... Well, you, you, you generate uh, test scenarios. 
And yeah. the question is, what are you um, uh, transferring to to the test uh, to the test team, basically? So yeah, so okay, okay, uh, yeah. There is two points. First of all, to be sure that we will cover uh, the whole system, so the whole model. Okay, that's the first point. So we uh, using colors and so on. We try to be sure that there is enough test sequences, and then we transfer the test sequences using the test scenarios, the generic test scenarios. Okay, so graphical uh, scenarios to the test team that will execute them on uh, on the on the platform on the built system, okay? Uh, basically, historically, uh, CNES uh, works uh, using a kind of um, test specification, word documents that describe all tests that are to be executed. And the idea in this collaboration is just to not use such kind of word documents that are manually filled, but just use the Capella uh, generated scenarios as uh, validation inputs, and then we generate several scenarios. Try, try, we try to be sure that we cover all the model, and then we send all um, scenarios, all test sequences to the teams, uh, to the validation teams, and they validate that the, the system really works regarding those specification. But I think that what the question, what is behind that, is that true? There is missing kind of structural and uh, quite automatic and and yeah and uh, uh, strong links and strong use of capella for the whole process currently we are just working on the uh, on capturing the system test in this context but that's true we can try to uh, to extend this approach on the whole process but yeah not in this the case of this project but maybe a, another one at CNES to yeah to, to manage yeah. all the process and the, uh, the coverage of requirements and to be sure that uh, the model is well covered and so on and so on. And, and this, this reminds me uh, a presentation from Thales a few years ago about uh, uh, test case generation and, and yes, testing in general. And they were able to okay, generate test sequences and things like that, but also uh, uh, from uh, a defect uh, to go back to the model and identify uh, uh, the potential uh, element involved in the model, uh, are you also able to to do that uh, with your approach? Not not in a, not an automatic way or a quite easy way. Uh, that in the, in our context, it will be uh, manual navigation using Capella capabilities and following links between a scenario that's true if you find a defect uh, in, in, the, in this case you will identify one function uh, function that that has a problem regarding its context and so you will be able to navigate through the capella model to find back the but currently there is nothing that is quite automatically automatical or just helped uh, just using the capella uh, and it will be just a process kind of process things just to decide how we what we will do if we find a defect then you will go in this diagram and find this item and so on so on so on so, on. so yeah nothing that is quite implemented or, or whatever for the moment yeah just process steps mm -hmm.